well, today's a big day. We are putting up the trusses, so the roof is going to go on. We had a ton of our friends and cousins up here on the island, and we had an absolute blast. But they need wood. I'm loading up that thing by myself. Do you think I can do it? If I run out, I could be sitting here for a long time. I could be sitting here until dark. Early the next morning, we went fishing with some very good friends. What? Oh my God. That's four pounds. Go, go get the scale. We need to weigh this. That's every bit of four pounds. over the car next to us. I was at a loss. Like, I could not believe that this happened. <laughs> well, this guy was such a good place. I want to get down on the whole time. Oh! In this week's episode, we have all kinds of hard work, fun adventures, some crazy mishaps, and just a general good time up here in our adventure at the lake. It all started with getting the log facings on the outside of the cabins. This way we can start closing it in and really turning it into a house. We're in the stage where there's a lot of the detail work being done, so the soffits and the fascia. We had to strap the roof in preparation for next week where we put on the steel roofing. So things are starting to look really kind of closed in and solid and it's, uh, it's a really nice stage. Making progress here, big time. All the the uh, log facings are on. It's um, a two-inch log facing, so it's uh, pine and uh, really matches well with the original log cabin. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, we're gonna paint it or stain it so it looks uh, about the same color as the original cabin, and then the roofs are already joined up. There's no steel roofing on there yet, but that's uh, that's going down next week. And uh, the windows are in, so now we're pretty much sealed up on the outside. You can see over there a uh, round window. That's been on Caroline's wish list for a long time. Kind of after visiting Hobbiton in New Zealand and being a fan of that, uh, she thought it would be really cozy in her room to have a, a round window, and we were able to locate one. And the guys installed it, and it looks really good in there. And I think that's gonna be uh, just a cozy little feature in her room. 
So yeah, uh, things are coming along great. Check it out. This week we also said goodbye to our carpenter team, the, the framers who put everything together for us so far, Jonathan and Brian and Dawson, awesome guys. They work so hard and they did such quality workmanship. We were very, very happy with everything you did here and unfortunately they had to go on to another job, but uh, we're bringing in a different crew uh, starting next week um, to start things like the roof and then begin to work on the interior of the cabin. I, I must admit, it is a big project. I mean, there's no joke building on an island. Um, everything is complicated compared to building on the mainland. It, it takes longer, it's harder, but it is a rewarding project. We're now seven weeks. I think this is our seventh video, yeah, since we started um, filming up here at the island. And so we're getting closer, but uh, still a lot of work to do. Just want to introduce you to Jonathan Franz. He's the head carpenter here that took uh, our little cabin and made it into an absolutely beautiful masterpiece of artwork. Good job. Thank you. Him and his team. Uh, he's going to just explain some of the stuff he did for us. So. Yeah. I guess the uh, most challenging part was probably the foundation. When we came in, it took us about three days to just set the floor. And then as soon as that was done, we, we were really, uh, we were, we were uh, really quick to get the walls up and the roof because we had a nice and level surface to work with. And then after that, we came in and really um, talked to Pete and Carol and just what they wanted. They wanted a porch, so we, we built the porch and got a little loft in there for, for, <laughs> let's the, go for take, the kids. Let's go take a look, we'll move up closer. So it started with the whole floor system, really. I mean, we put in uh, ground screws, which you've seen on uh, past videos, then built that whole insulated floor system because we want to be able to use the building in the, in the winter. And then they framed up the walls and put on a roof structure, which again is a whole system. It's waterproofed and insulated and um, just an amazing structure. But like Jonathan was saying, um, the most important is to get the, the base perfectly level and then everything else is square from there. Right. And then there's some challenges adding it to an old cabin, right? Oh, that cabin's been around for oof, since the 50s or 40s. So what, what kind of things did you run into there? Um, just yeah, matching it up with the old walls and then matching it with the old roof. That was probably the most challenging part. That and I mean, we had to do some leveling on the cabin. Yeah. Um, over the years, you know, it heaves in the winter a little bit and it had sunk. So they didn't have ground screws back when they built this thing. So um, yeah, it was, it was laser leveling everything. And, um, even putting on the steel roof next week, uh, yeah. John and his team put the strapping on. But you know, with an old roof, you had some sagging here and there and they had to shim it all up and get the strapping perfectly level so when you next week when you see the roofing on it'll be nice and square match the deck as well with the old deck it's right it's yeah the same height look forward to pulling up a rocking chair on that deck and uh, opening a cold beverage and jumping in the hot tub Absolutely. <laughs> sounds like a good good uh, way to spend the weekend we'll have to have you up when it's all done and thank your, you very much and your wife you. and John's expect his wife is expecting any day now so he's probably got to get out of here yeah, gotta get going <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot thank uh, you Tim. excellent work yeah. really happy with it thank you very much we uh, really enjoyed it here we uh, were fed very well probably better than most uh, <laughs> most guys eat at home and uh, <laughs> we had a really nice time fishing and building and working and you guys were very pleasant it was very, very nice. Awesome. I'm very happy. Um, Carol's our head painter here, and we got the fascia board in, and they needed to put it up the next day, and so she started painting right away because it's it's a good 
idea to get them painted before they go up, otherwise you're up on ladders trying to paint. So she worked late, late into the night, well into the dark and got it done. exciting thing is we got a new fridge. Now for the last six weeks we've been working out of uh, coolers and that is quite tough. I mean we're used to doing that when we're on the road uh, traveling but uh, we had three extra hungry carpenters here and so we had to store a lot of food and keep it iced up and so on. We have a really good Yeti and an Orion um, so they're good quality uh, coolers, but man, is it ever nice now to go to a fridge. Now this big fridge was really heavy. Uh, they took it off with a forklift and then we struggled it into one of the boats, took it across the lake, worked it up into the cabin, and it is now up and running. And it is an off the grid fridge, which is something if you're in an off the grid situation, this company's called Unique and they make off the grid appliances. This one runs off of uh, propane. So it's easy for us to get propane tanks in here and uh, it works like a charm. haul it in and while we have the help because we tried to we got it in here with three people but we could use about four or five to get it off. This is going to be the pantry area and um, it still needs to be framed in and everything like that but for now so it was awesome to get rid of all the coolers I think I had four coolers trying to feed you know everyone coming up here on projects so now I have lots and lots of space and the freezer is huge one of the biggest jobs around here is going into town for supplies Normally when we go into town, we're stopping between like three to six different stores from doing laundry to picking up paint and just different supplies, mainly food. And then this time we were hitting our last store and we were so excited, but we could barely shut the doors in the Jeep because they were just bursting with so much um, stuff that we had bought at all the different stores. And that's when it happened. One of the cans of paint came flying out of the car 
smashing down on the pavement and splattering all over the car next to us. I was at a loss, like I could not believe that just happened. Caroline's pants were soaked, our Jeep had paint, it just, paint was everywhere. And I, we just kind of sat there stunned a little bit. And then I quickly took a picture of the license plate. Caroline was splashing water bottles all over it. And I ran in, we called over the intercom to get some help, like to try and notify the person. And that was quite the panic. But luckily, um, I think it was Patrick at uh, the Walmart there came running out to help us with water and just paper towels. And the paint was a water-based paint, luckily, because it, it all came out fine. But man, that was a big shock. I always wondered why there would be paint on the road sometimes and go, how does it get there? Well, that's how it got there. <laughs> so luckily the lady, um, when we were cleaning up, we didn't know who would be coming up, showing up, you know, how angry they would be. Cause like, how do you explain three people washing someone's car when they come out from the grocery store and um, with paint on it? So, um, but this, this mother came out and she was a little bit shocked and stunned at first because it must have looked like a crime scene. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she was nice and understanding and um, she actually helped us out and which was a shock. Um, but yeah, so I learned a lot about that. Just that uh, accidents happen to to all of us and um, there yeah. There are still a lot of really nice people. Yeah, there. there are still a lot of really nice people and understanding people and so that was really great. All's well that ends well. <laughs> so Carolyn and I were shopping all day today and uh, we opened up our door and the can of paint went out and all over this beautiful car here. Um, as you can see, the mess and we were panicking um, but luckily Patrick came to our rescue and we called over the intercom with the license plate and we didn't get anyone so we came out here to try and clean it up and it came out nice thankfully my heart is pounding but um, this is the do you mind this is the owner Hello. and uh, whew, we're thankful that she is uh, okay. <laughs> okay with it. <laughs> wow, but um, yeah, so thank you. Sorry about that. Next, me and Dan went fishing and canoed and portaged to a remote lake that has no inhabitants on it, and we tried our luck fishing there. Smallmouth. Different than large, obviously. Yeah. A lot of harder fights. We're gonna let them go now. Yeah. Now we are on a remote island, but we get a lot of visitors up here. We've had cousins and friends pretty much all week, maybe one day this week where we didn't have anyone on the island. And that's a lot of fun for the kids. They're fishing and having fun together.
one night they were out fishing in the evening and it was getting late. Um, I was actually just getting ready to go to bed and in walked the kids and you could tell something was unusual, abnormal. And Pete had a fishing hook caught in the skin just below his eye. Uh, Pete is, you can see him with no scar and no, well, a little tiny little scar there, but uh, it'll go away. We called 911 at first because I thought, man, I don't want to mess around with a hook that close to the eyeball. Um, and then because we're on satellite, I just said, you know what, forget it. I'm going to go into to the marina. And so we jumped in the boat, Pete and I, and we raced into the marina. Now, Paul at the marina is a very handy guy, and he happened to have a pair of really good cutters. So we disinfected them. Uh, got them very very clean and then got the cutters in there and snipped off the end of the hook and it was quite scary my hand was shaking but because it has a barb on it, it once it was in it wouldn't reverse back I actually tried here with the pliers to break the barb but that didn't work and it's in such a sensitive area anyway all is well that ends well we were able to snip the hook and then Pete pulled it out it was gross to watch but uh, he's a tough kid and how does it look Pete it healed all up yeah, it's totally fine though. We made sure to disinfect it with some polysporin. He put a big patch on it and in the dark we came back home and everybody was happy. Mm -hmm. At least the barb. The, the boys, the kids were fishing and he got a hook casting. It got stuck in his lower eye. It's not in his eye, it's in the skin below his eye. So we're gonna, we tried to remove it, but we're gonna have to take him probably to the hospital and get that done properly. So. Here we go. Way towards me. There you go. You're out. Okay. Now, let's get... Let's get an alcohol rub on your face. Yes. So. You got it out? Yeah. How does it feel? Interesting. Now, this is the case in many places in North America, but here also in Ontario, we have a large forest fire burning, thankfully about 40 kilometers south of here. So not uh, a threat to our cabin or to the island, but it is a huge forest fire and it keeps getting bigger. It's at 10,000 or more hectares. So there's almost two acres per hectare. That's a big fire. And we have uh, crews in from all over Canada. We have crews helping out from the States. Thank you for coming up and helping us. We even have crews in from Mexico. There's about, um, I, I heard about 10 airplanes and a bunch of helicopters just going nonstop trying to get this fire out. And I think they're starting to make some headway now and it's coming under control. But from time to time, the wind changes and we'll get a whole whiff of smoke on the lake and you can actually see it across and, and smell wood burning. Now there's a fire ban everywhere up here and so we haven't smelled uh, wood smoke in a while. So when it does come through, it's, uh, it's pretty strong, you, you notice it. We're building an addition on our cabin, so I called my insurance company to see if I could get it insured uh, and in a hurry. I mean, I wasn't thinking about it during the building, but that one morning I woke up and there's a smell of fire <laughs> in the air and smoke and I thought, man, I better get this thing insured. Can you imagine? Um, and so I emailed my insurance company and he said, yeah, we'll get the insurance on. And then a minute or two later, he said, oh, uh, just a little hiccup here. I can't insure any additions anywhere until the fire is deemed under control by the fire marshal. And I, I thought, oh man, just our luck. But uh, anyway, so I think they're getting that fire under control and then we'll whip insurance on, on the building. But that's something to consider if you are building in the wilderness. Um, there's always the risk of a fire. So be safe out there. And thank you to all the firefighters out there, men and women who are working so hard in the heat. And oh man, that is one difficult job. So thank you. We really appreciate what you do out there, keeping us all safe. Luckily, the wind shifted and the smoke cleared, making it a beautiful weekend for when the cousins came up. Happy birthday, dear Erica.
Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Welcome back to another video. It's us, Dan the Man, Eva. You already know we're gonna be jumping off this cliff. Wait, is this on? Let's make this work. Oh, oh, oh. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see. see.